Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from an inmate at the county jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. To ref Well, hello. My name is Joel Wilborn, and this is 8QS Inmate Call. That was one of those uh, calls from the jail. Here lately, I haven't been getting a lot of them because I don't know too many people in the jail. They, they've all moved to the prison, but I am keeping an eye on uh, some of the people that are locked up in jail. The the jail population, it's, it's a little different from the prison. The prison has training and they have uh, a lot of entertainment they have the J players so they can watch movies and listen to songs and but uh, jail it's a little boring you know, it's, you're just waiting for something and so the anticipation just kind of grows but this is uh, a new call from Brian Welch his son is missing he suspects that his wife took her got upset with him he's been he sells weapons on the black market and was doing quite well so he's got some money built up from that business it's just that uh he did something said something you know or there was a misunderstanding i don't know she got upset with him and ran it on him and so uh with the with that type of investigation, yeah, it's very very possible that uh, they could gather enough evidence to get them locked away for a while. And uh, you know, when your own family members turn on you like that, you have a risky situation that's made even worse. But that it goes all. It, what I want to emphasize in this one is how. Uh, our society feeds into the criminal network. You know, I have this little demon that I post online that's uh, the crime motivator because every criminal has a crime motivation. And, you know, we, we typically look back on criminals and, and it's more like if a man stole a loaf of bread from your house, you know, would you be more or as upset as you would if he stole a diamond ring? It could be that he stole the bread to feed his family. Well, also it could be that he stole a diamond ring to feed his family. And that's a crime that we like to hear about in court and, and see how the jury or how the judge kind of responds to something like that. Then you have those that it's like what's going on at the border in the United States. The people are jumping across and there's folks that are making money by, you know, you pay me some money and I can get you over to the United States. And then uh, they're also smuggling some stuff. And so that's a crime that comes about because of the situation out there. And then there's posts on social media on how to steal certain cars and people are doing that just because they saw this video and they wanted to give it a try. Maybe they're bored. Maybe they just uh, couldn't figure out how to steal videos before. If we start banning weapons, that's going to grow the arms dealership profession. Of course, criminals, they want you to create more laws. They want more bans because it gives them a, a new uh, product to uh, profit off of. And I just, I don't like the idea of banning something when we can just concentrate on the person. Because we have... We have a lot of uh, opportunities for crime. And it's the way these folks see it, it's quick money. And uh, so you have this man who's in this lucrative business because he saw that there's the, a threat to legally purchasing weapons. So he's selling 
what the, the public wants. And it could have dire effects. You know, if a person goes down and says, I, I, I can't lie on my gun application, I can't uh, fool my family and, and get away with this, so I'm just going to go to the to my drug dealer and ask if he can get me some weapons. And, of course, make a little extra money, that person's going to go reach out and take advantage of the resources available. And so we have a, a situation like uh, Brian where he took advantage of that and he's jeopardizing his family. And now there's a good possibility his wife doesn't want anything to do with this. You know, maybe he's saying, oh, she got upset with me. She could have more or less like got upset with him because you need to quit this. This is a dangerous business. No, no, no. We're making good money. And then she just says, that's it. And I'm just going to turn you in and take off with the kid. That could be the case. But another thing that's associated with that is when people get into these things is because that's what they figure is the easiest and the best thing for them. They don't think of that they can go out and apply at a local grocery store or something. I don't know. Maybe it's beneath them. Maybe they just don't, uh, they don't have enough discipline to, to get up and go to work. It, it could be anything. And we can't imme- instantly and automatically assume that people are committing crimes because they're evil people. When, when a person goes to prison, there's trauma. I committed a crime. I got caught. I knew the risk, I failed. What could I have done different? You know, there's a lot of things that goes through their mind. It's like the interview I did with um, Anthony Covert. He said, when you're sitting in a cell, you have plenty of time to think about what you did in your life. And with the right uh, surrounding, you know, with people around there that, that show a little empathy and sympathy toward them, these folks will turn this this trauma to good and that helps them to heal but with the wrong stuff like what Marianne Atkins got she went to prison and they told her oh my goodness you need to do a plea deal because you if you go go to court with a first degree murder charge you're going to get a long sentence and this little teenager didn't want to do that so she's making plea deals that she really shouldn't have made because it hurt her and so when these folks go to jail and they're getting this bad advice, it could make things worse. You know, they're, they're sitting there, they're already traumatized. They're already feeling terrible. And it could be that, oh, wow, I committed a crime and I shouldn't have. Or it could be that I've been doing so well for so long and now I got caught. Or like the case of Brian, somebody ratted on me. If it hadn't been for that, I wouldn't be here. If we find out why people go to prison, it's easier to work with them on helping them find a better solution than committing crimes. And every person is unique. Every person has different motivators. And once you stop that motivation, once you nick it, then people can go free and never go back to prison. And that's what I want to work on. I want to try to find something that the people could believe in instead of committing crime. And that's entirely up to the individual. As many people as I've talked to with committing all kinds of crimes, they all just want to be heard. They all want to, people to understand. It's like the old phrase, you know, you know what I mean? I went out and I... I couldn't find a job and I couldn't find a place to live and my, my two kids are starving you know what I mean and so I have to go out and sell drugs because nobody will hire me you know what I mean and the people who do know what they mean can work with them can help them out and that's the folks that are already been through that mess and, and they're out here rather than the folks that have been through that mess and got caught. Because if you get advice from somebody that's sitting in jail, it's more like, you know, a marriage counselor that's been through six divorces. But that's also a way to give you experience and give you that um, edge that 
people who haven't been through that just read it in a book don't have and there's a lot I haven't been through but I do ask questions you know I talk to serial killers do you think gun control is going to work I talk to child molesters I talk to rapists I talk to people who uh, write bad checks who sell drugs I want to find out what we can do to help this person live the life that this person wants to live I'm not judging them I'm not condemning them I don't want to find out their crime tactics I just want to understand the after effect they committed a crime they've been locked up that's a done deal there's nothing we can do about that where do we go from here and the first question is what do you want I can't imag- automatically assume this person wants to get out and never go back because maybe the person does and maybe this person is just looking for a reason not to come back which is a couple of times I had to do that convince people that you don't need to go back and they would tell me why they want to go back but the only way you can find that out is to open up the line of communication we need to talk to each other we need to work with each other we can't prevent crime that's that's impossible so why why fight that but we can increase our uh, investigative techniques you know you don't want to defund the police you don't want to defund detectives and, and you want to hire more people that that are into the psychology and sociology you know, the, the sciences that study human behavior you want to be into the medical to find out how you can overcome an addiction and uh, you want to be able to to work with finances there's people out there who uh, are working two jobs and it's just not enough rent goes up the cost of owning a vehicle goes up there's maybe uh, a repair that needs to be made or a huge medical expense and these people tend to turn to something they shouldn't be turning to so if we're going to f- help folks get out of prison stay out of prison we need to listen to them and if we want to help folks not go to prison we need to share that advice with folks that are in school folks that are in uh community centers or people that are just sitting in a, a office waiting to talk to a counselor to get some advice these are folks that need that information so you can use your imagination on what's going on with Brian is Brian in there because of his own greed is his wife running off with her kid because she's afraid what could be that reason and wouldn't it be good to talk to the people involved i mean should i jump to a conclusion and say that Brian this person cheated you and she shouldn't be allowed to take care of your kid should i automatically assume that or should i reach out and try to talk to her A lot of times when I try to recap, reach out to folks, they don't want to be uh, reached. They don't want to talk, and I have to respect that. I don't want to force anybody to do anything they don't want to do. And uh to know that, I need to uh communicate. You know, when the officials told me that there were numerous women that didn't want to talk to me at the women's prison in Washington, I found that hard to believe. So I would talk to the folks in the prison who in there doesn't want to talk to me because I need to know who doesn't want to talk to me so I can avoid that person. The officials didn't give me the names and all the folks and I talked to over 2 dozen of them had no idea who didn't want to talk to me in that prison. So it was just a, a ruse. And as much as I hounded them about it, I never got an answer. And there's really no reason to pursue it because It was a bold face lie and nobody can prove a lie. And uh I did the best I could to try to resolve this issue because I don't want to reach out to somebody who doesn't want to talk to me. So right now I haven't had anybody tell me that. But I have had people that I would reach out to, send a message to or something like that wouldn't get a response. And I don't have to keep pursuing. I know parents siblings they reach out to me but it's more like if this person doesn't want to be talked to and they have to respect that 
It's like, oh no, well, you keep calling, well, you keep doing it. It's like, no, I'm not. Because the person does obviously doesn't want to talk. And uh, that's a, a form of communication silence. And there could be a lot said in there. And we won't know why the person doesn't want to talk until the person does talk, if that person decides to do it. So kind of I'm asking that you think about it. Think about what goes through people's mind, why they want to do something. And don't just come up with one reason. Brian could be sitting in jail, one, because he committed a crime, two, because he neglected his family, three, because he got greedy, you know, four, because he was uh, too open, didn't keep his, his business to himself. You don't think about that. And it it give you a, a better understanding of what's going through the mind of folks. We our, our biggest threat is not the folks that's in prison. Our biggest threat is the folks that are about to go to prison. And those are the ones we want to stop. Those are the ones we want to look for. So if you're out in your neighborhood and you see something suspicious, you hear something that doesn't sound right, you might as well contact the local authorities. Have those folks tell you, oh, yeah, we know about that. It's not that bad. Or uh, don't be concerned about it. Or or that it would blow over. You know, then you're going through the learning process. And they're getting information. It's like these folks are paying attention. And they're they're thinking about their, their neighbors. And that's a good thing. We keep this line of communication open. We can help. And as long as people get out and commit crimes and nobody says anything. Or they don't get locked up. They don't get, uh, you know, there's there's no uh, community effort to stop them. They're going to keep on doing it. So when the community shows that we don't want this stuff going on, eventually there'll be a connection. But we won't know unless we start talking to each other. Well, thanks for tuning in, and hopefully you'll be able to open up some communication and, and uh Get some good information there from your friends, family, neighbors, loved ones. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. Just do a search for Joel Wellborn and take a look at some of those videos. I, I added some other stuff in there too that are prison related. And some that are just kind of out there. Just to, to, to throw a, a little variety in here. Because this is not just about prison. It's, it's about um, communication and keeping people together. And uh, that could be all across the spectrum. You know, if you're talking to somebody that's locked up in prison, it doesn't mean you only have to talk about prison. You can talk about different flavors of bubblegum if you want. Well, go out and have yourself a wonderful day and make some fantastic memories for tomorrow. Thank you.